Good news, everyone. It's Friday. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the 15th day of April 2022. It's 50 degrees and sunny here at Site B. It's Friday, Passover and Easter weekend, plus my sister's birthday. So, but first, we've got to take a look at the last minute bits and bobs of news and nonsense that have made it across our table since yesterday. And whatever we talked about yesterday, which I believe was fourth edition and people bagging on D&D Beyond. Hey, what do you know? There's another one. Is it weird that the, the only individuals who seem to be upset about Hasbro purchasing D&D Beyond are people who claim they're fans of Wizards of the Coast in fifth edition? If you truly are somebody who actually plays 5e in 2022, there is nothing bad about this. Now, if you're like me and find people at your table doing this mm -hmm. annoying, uh, then yeah, that might be a bad thing. It does distract from the game. Uh, my personal experience with D&D Beyond was it was overly clunky for what it needed to do. And there were better 5e character programs that I found that did the job better and simpler. D&D Beyond sort of, I mean, I timed it. Remember, I timed it between the amount of time it took me to look up the answer to a D&D question on paper using the book and the time it took somebody to do this to look up the same answer. Uh, it took the person with this longer than it did me to just go, oh, okay, wait a minute. Oh, oh, yeah, it's um, DC5. So that was my my only really issues with D, D Beyond, which I assume now that they have Hasbro and Wizards Digital behind them, those issues will probably be fixed. I mean, and really, it's not the program's fault. It's just these things. You know, I mean, they can't, they're not fast enough to catch, keep up with whatever's running the program. Uh, it might not be the same issues if you were doing it on the computer, but then would you want to have somebody at your table doing this? I mean, they are a distraction. Yeah. So the, the latest one uh, from uh, people who apparently claim to be fans of Wizards of the Coast and fans of 5th edition it was, um, um, wasn't it great that Hasbro bought D&D &D Beyond and gave it to Wizards of the Coast as a gift? Wasn't it great that Hasbro bought D&D Beyond and gave it to Wizards of the Coast as a gift? You do know, right, that Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast. Okay? Wizards of the Coast falls under the digital slash wizards department of the three-tiered current configuration of Hasbro. Hasbro didn't give D&D &D Beyond as a gift to Wizards of the Coast. They're the same company. They didn't buy it for Wizards of the Coast. They bought it to control the IP. Wizards of the Coast just happens to be the name associated with Dungeons & Dragons, but there's going to be multiple individuals who are both associated with Wizards of the Coast aspect of Hasbro and not working with D, D beyond it was not a gift to wizards of the coast because they own wizards of the coast so they're bought a gift for themselves and the second one is um how much money they paid for it and people are like oh my god you paid that much money for D, &D beyond <gasps> <gasps> Now, these are the same people who are like, yeah, fuck you, OSR. D&D, Wizards of the Coast made $8 billion in 2020 or whatever it was. Yeah, look how much money we made. We're the number one selling game in the world. We own 57% of the, the market. We've got so much money. Fuck you, every other game. But now they're like, fuck you, Wizards of the Coast. Why did you spend that much money on D&D &D Beyond? Uh, you do know, right, that a million is less than a billion. So for whatever amount 
Hasbro paid to purchase D&D Beyond. And it probably might have been a million or even two or three million. Might have even been four million. Who knows? It, that's nothing. Okay, that's 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 if your Wizards of the Coast made billions of dollars, a few million is like me having a couple pennies and buying some gum with a, a couple pennies after I just made 10 bucks mowing up the lawn. Okay, you do understand that a billion is bigger than a million. So no matter how much Hasbro paid for D&D Beyond compared to what Hasbro made is, yeah, it was nothing. It was Trump change. Uh, so I don't know why this is a bad thing, considering you're the same people who just a few months ago, hell, just a couple days ago, were saying, you know, Hasbro Wizards of the Coast made so much money. You know, that nobody made as much money as they did. So fuck you, OSR. Fuck you, OGGM. Hasbro wins, you lose. Of course, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, Hasbro wins. I'm a stockholder. <laughs> no matter what negative things I think about 5e, I'm still going to be like, yeah, every time they make money, I make money. So this is a good thing for me. <laughs> but you can't give me shit about how much money they made and then complain about how much money they spent unless you think a million is more than a billion. And again, I'm here to remind you that a billion is more than a million and Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast and has absolutely no plans whatsoever for letting it go. They made that very clear. So, yeah. Again, if you're going to post news about 5e and talk about 5e and talk about wizards and hasbro and bag on me or bag on the osr or bag on another game you should probably at least take a couple seconds to know what you're talking about especially if your big thing is D, &D wizards of the coast good everybody else bad because then you make comments like this and you just look stupid you look make wizards of the coast look stupid you make fifth edition look stupid and you kind of sort of justify the argument that you think people like me are making about you so yeah i don't know why this is such a thing i don't know why so many people who play or claim they play 5e are the ones who are complaining that hasbro bought D, &D beyond you know People in the OSR, like me, are saying, who cares? Who, who cares? And speaking of digital, uh, so a couple days ago, I got a post on my blog. We were talking about how Pezo made a 5e product. And the person who I was talking to said, you know, it would be really cool if Pezo released a 5e version of the monsters that they've made for the Pezoverse. Now, obviously, you know, they can't make a monster manual and put the stuff like Doppelganger in it or whatever, but they made a lot of original monsters. Um, so we was like, yeah, we're going to ever see that. Well, in talking about Starfinder and what's coming up this year for Starfinder, Pezo sort of let it release that, yeah, they are working on another 5e adjacent adventure path. And they are working on a 5e conversion for a lot of their monsters. So I'm sure we're the same people who were complaining about them doing Abomination Vaults are going to say, oh, how dare Pezo make 5e product? Wizards of the Coast needs to address this. And the answer is no. No, Wizards of the Coast does not need to address it. And Pezo making 5e product is nothing new. So, yeah. Pezo sort of hinted that we could expect at least one more 5th edition Pathfinder 2 Adventure Path conversion and at least one book of Pezo monsters. Uh, yeah, way to go, Pezo. That's why you, you know, whatever. And finally, speaking of digital, D&D Direct has been announced for, it'll be the 21st of this month. It's a, a jam-packed 30-minute video presentation on April 21st at 9 a.m. that will have reveals for what's coming up in the world of D&D, &D, including news upon, uh, on what's going on with the D&D &D video games, news of what's going on 
with the D and D movie and the D and D TV show, and possibly some hints of what we can expect coming up product wise, despite Radiant Citadel. I assume they're going to talk about Radio Radiant Citadel. But if you look at the thing they posted, uh, and I will post a link down below, I was going to try and share it, but for some reason that didn't work with my computer today. Share screen, because my computer's weird. But, um, you know, it's a typical D&D 22nd um, blurb. Um, it's got possible hints in it. The big hints are the there is a Funko Pop Mind Flare a figure of a beholder, an Xbox controller, and in the very last bit of the corner, we have a stuffed animal hamster holding a D10. So between the Mind Flayer, beholder, and stuffed animal hamster, of course, you know, the giant space hamsters being such a huge running joke throughout Spelljammer's history, and of course, Boo, the normal size giant space ham hamster that rode around with big with minks in the Baldur's Gate stuff, and we get the famous quote, "Go for the eyes, Boo! Go for the eyes!" Um, so we have this stuffed hamster that's pro most likely either Boo or a you know a, a, a nod to the giant space hamster joke of Spelljammer, which of course means people are going Spelljammer confirmed because we've got a mind flayer and a beholder and a hamster. Uh, but, of course, one of the video games that's coming up is Baldur's Gate. And we know that Minxed and Boo showed up in Baldur's Gate before. So seeing a stuffed animal hamster uh, could be a nod to the fact that they're working on Baldur's Gate 3 and they might have an announcement date. Uh, the Beholder and the Mind Flare could be Spelljammer. It could be, you know, the Radiant Citadel takes place in the ethereal plane and that, you know... When you're in the ethereal astral plane, you're dealing with outer planar entities like Githyanki and Mind Flayers. Or, yeah, I mean, Spelljammer. Uh, also, Mind Flayers and Beholders play a huge part in, of course, the mythology of Undermountain. And if you look down at the bottom of the picture, I'll post a link, you can see that it is on a map. And the map looks very much like either a dungeon map or an ice cave map. Um... Now, they wouldn't have put that specific map if it wasn't a hint. Uh, and also, the, the, the screen, the background where it says D&D Direct 421-2022 at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, looks like white dragon scales on a blue background. And then there is a what looks like a red dragon figure also in the picture. So from left to right, we have Mind Flare Funko Pop. We have a couple normal figures. We've got a Beholder figure. We've got the Xbox controller. We've got the hamster holding the D10. We've got what looks like a red dragon. We've got a background of what looks like white dragon scales on a blue background. And then we've got a map that looks like possibly either a dungeon map or an ice map. Uh, so based upon we know that Wizards of the Coast hides hints when they do this. Baldur's Gate. Icewind Dale, uh, something with white dragons or snow, possibly Undermountain, because Beholders and Mind Flayers play heavily in Undermountain mythology. Uh, possibly a hint towards either Spelljammer or Baldur's Gate. The fact that the figure of the hamster is next to the Xbox controller makes me think maybe we're getting the uh, Xbox version of Baldur's Gate or an Xbox version of some D&D game. I mean, fingers crossed, it's it's Spelljammer, right? Or some take on Spelljammer. I don't know why they would do Spelljammer and Radiant Citadel sent separate. It really makes more sense to do them together if they were going to do it and just have the D&D multiverse, wizards versed, magic verse be center here's the center radiant citadel and the spokes you know off of radiant citadel can go to the various D, &D worlds or the various magic worlds and you can transverse them using these jammer ships unless you are lucky enough to be an actual planeswalker like jace or urza or mishra that's how i do it i don't know if that's how wizards of the coast would do it i know a, lo a lot of people are excited to see spell jammer i don't really know 
if it would be a thing now, it might be too late to do Spelljammer and Radiant Citadel as separate settings. It would make more sense in my head to combine them. But these hints do seem to make us think, especially Mind Flayer and Hamster, Spelljammer. But then Wizards of the Coast lies. So that we, could be what they want us to think. The fact that the, the white dragon scales, blue background, ice cave map also makes me think something Baldur's Gate, something Icewind Dale, something dungeony. Who knows? Uh, anyways, if you want to stop speculating and actually find out what's going on, turn in to your friendly local Wizards of the Coast use YouTube channel April 21st at 9 a.m. And we'll find out the answers. Until then, I will post the link down below and you can make your guesses. If you appreciate this content, let me know. If you want to hear me do more nonsense about what's going on in the world of Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons and D&D Beyond and what other things people are... I still don't understand. A billion is more than a million. <laughs> Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast, okay? Just, just, just stop. Just go outside, get an ice cream, and just, just stop. Just, just, just stop. Get off my land!